presence of the Filling us with your love.
so much more than windows, warm doors. It's a warm embrace and a smiling face. It's waiting you. Oh, where there is no night. Oh, where the sun is the light. A place.
preventing any abuse of these guys catch a breath. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Bless them, One over here playing the guitar and singing the first tenor, which we like to call it the ladies' part. <laughs> I'd like for you to stand over on that side of the stage. <laughs> <laughs> well, in every quartet, there's got to be a tenor singer. Somebody's got to do it. And I'm proud to have Cody McQuarrie on board with the Interstate Quartet. How about it? Then the young man of the group. No, this young man. <laughs> How old are you now? About 19? Yeah. Oh, okay. He's <laughs> okay. 91 and old. <laughs> I wasn't going to go that far, bro. He just cut his pay. No, uh. If you can't tell me and the bass singer are twins, he's 18 minutes older than I am, but I'm still the boss. <laughs> and, and this is our grandfather, Verlin Drain. He's been singing ever since the dinosaurs was roaming around. <laughs> now, he started the Interstate Quartet back in 1979, and, he had, and he's had groups before then. But, uh, and he's also inducted into the Alabama Music Hall of Fame. How about it, Mr. Verlin Drain singing the baritone part? Thank you, God bless you. And then now my ugly half. <laughs> now this is my twin brother, Alex Utek. Um, he has sung with a lot of groups. He's been with the Dixie Echoes from Pensacola, Florida. He's been with the Diplomats from Carrollton, Georgia, and he has also appeared twice on the Grand Ole Opry with Daly and Vincent. How about it, Mr. Alex Utek singing the bass for us? Please, but not last. <clears throat> it's uh, my, my other grandson. I got two grandsons, and you can't imagine how it feels to be if you're singing with your grandkids. Amen. There's no way you can imagine that. I'm blessed beyond measure. Yes. Blessed. blessed beyond measure. And this one here, both of them does a tremendous job yeah. singing. They learn how to sing when they're eight years old. And uh, I put them to bed every night. I raise them. I put them to bed every night listening to Southern Gospel music on tape. And they went to sleep. I listened to that. And it is still Southern Gospel music in their heart. Amen. Then we got, when they got old enough, then uh, I reckon the eight year old, they uh, asked when it would be time to get saved. Amen. I said, Boy, I said, God knock on your heart. And you're crying. You can't keep from it. Amen. And it wasn't long like that that we had a woman. This my year broke down during song. Started crying. He said, Papa, I didn't mean messed up. They said, The Lord won't save me. Yeah. We just nailed down there and got her done. That was on. Amen. Amen. Have you regretted sin? Have you regretted sin? Amen. I think anybody that really gets saved won't regret it. Amen. Regret it. That's right. And then two weeks later, we were in the practice room. That old yonder started squalling in this year of saying and going home and practicing. Good practice. I said, what's the matter, son? He said, Papa, you know that tug you talk about? When the Lord wants to save you. And I said, yeah. He said, I, Lord, save me. Can I get saved in music right away the church? I had no arm folded here there. I said, let's just stay on down here. And the Lord come in your heart tonight. You remember that, Alex? Amen. Bless him. And uh, he didn't know how to pray. Be the one I've been to and said, say, Lord, please save me. Yeah. I don't want to go to hell. Please save me. If there's anything I've done wrong, please forgive me. Amen. Folks, that's all you got to do. Right. Just believe and ask those, those questions. You know, that's what right. can I do, Lord, to be saved? Amen. And he'll, the Bible says he'll come and serve for you and you him. That's well. That's well. But he got saved that, that afternoon at practice. And he looked up at me and said, Paul, Paul, I'm saved. I didn't know it feel this good. <laughs> he, he's been happy ever since both of them had. But this is Andrew, you take, 
my brother too, his twin over there, and Alex. Have you enjoyed this boy singing tonight? Have a good one.
The sun rising, the morning when I feel the wind blow across my face. When I hear the sound of children playing.
wonder what he has created to stop right now and look around from the sea to the heavens from the diamonds to the sand
Look, Sam, you get old enough, music ain't no other kind, are they? No. Right. Just ain't no other kind. It takes care of the, the soul, feeds the soul. That's right. From the spirit of the Holy Ghost and the fire. That's right. That's right. I like that. Sing that song. Yeah. Yeah. Sing that song. Yeah. Sing that song. Yeah. Yeah. Sing that song. 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 Yeah. Sing that Somebody in charge will be going two rounds or one. So obey the Lord, amen. Okay, that's what we've been doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We just bunch of fools for the Lord.
got a blessing out of what we've done tonight. Uh, just a quick, quick, well, just a, uh, our CDs are out there on a table. I've got one for 15, two for 20, or three for 25. That's a real good deal if you add that up. <laughs> Where'd you go to well, school that day? <laughs> but if you've enjoyed us tonight, take take our CDs home with you, plug it in that CD player, yeah. and uh, wear it out. And if you don't like it, give it to somebody you don't like. Amen. <laughs> Hope you've enjoyed us tonight. I think the lady got sick. She had many strokes. Yeah. A mini oh, no. stroke? Yeah. She, yeah, had she got diabetes? No. She don't? Mm -hmm. Okay, I noticed she looked like she was sweating. And, and I've got yeah. diabetes. And uh, like, well, early this morning, my, my diabetes dropped. Uh, and it won't be up uh, since 58. Oh, goodness. Wow. And uh, so I lately got up and. Uh, started poking sweets into me and pulled it back up. But I thought that's probably what happened to her. She was sweating, it looked like. And, and uh, but still, we're gonna pray for her. Amen. We're gonna pray, bring her to God in prayer. Amen. And, uh, cause we need to pray for one another, y'all. We need to stand for one another. And I mean, God and us is all we got. Right. And there's not many of us anymore, you can tell that by the cheers in here. <laughs> And it's getting it's fading away more and more all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Bible says the last day will be a great, be a great falling away. Right. Hey, it ain't coming. It's here. Right. It's here, and it's everywhere. Everywhere we go, it's about it. There ain't nobody, that, ain't nobody church no more. Just a few. And this a man told me the other day. He said uh, the only thing that's holding this world together is God not coming back. Is a missionary going overseas. And they are still a lot of souls being born overseas. And that's probably the only thing that's keeping God from coming back. Well, everybody else here in the United States looks to me like let up. They can give out and uh, give up. But uh, God ain't give up on us. Amen. We shouldn't give up on Him. Right. We should keep on going. Amen. God bless you. We love you, is our prayer. I hope we can say something, song something tonight to bless your heart. Amen. Tell somebody about us. Amen. We like to go sing to somebody else, witness to somebody else. And those that didn't come tonight, they missed the blessing. Amen. You know, God here. They missed the blessing. And if you didn't appetize and tell people that you had a singing, then you caused them to lose a blessing. But if you don't, if you, if you appetize and they didn't show up and didn't come, then they will have to miss a blessing for not coming. Because I got a blessing, whether anybody else did or not. I didn't drive, we didn't drive all these long miles up here just for help. We'd have been at home and not been with her. Uh, they both have been with the children and uh, wives. And I could have been my wife watching TV. <laughs> God bless you. We love you. Thank you, Lord. Give the Lord a big old hand clap. <laughs> we do appreciate y'all. Amen. Really enjoy. Amen. Mm -hmm. Give them a big old hand clap. Amen. Thank you, Sister Mickey. You keep your, in your prayers. Amen. And also, uh, I had a message earlier, Sister Angie's desiring prayer, and everybody be praying for her. She's been going through a lot of sickness and just got out of the hospital, I think, yesterday. And uh, everybody remember her and be praying for her. Amen. Amen. And Brother Tim was supposed to be on his way, so maybe he'll make it here in a few minutes. Amen. But I'll tell you what, we've enjoyed it. It's been a blessing. Amen. Yes, amen. You know, I really yeah, felt the anointing of the Lord. Amen. And uh, I felt the Lord speaking some things tonight. Amen. He's an awesome God, amen. How many know that? We serve an awesome yeah. God tonight. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise his holy name, amen. Yeah. Amen.
Before we got the Brother Herbert brought his guitar tonight. You want to sing a couple there, Brother Herbert? Yeah, yeah.
on to tell him the story, you know. Yeah. 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 <coughs> Problems he had getting there and everything. Yeah. And the devil tried to steer him so he wouldn't go in, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know if he got any tablets for me. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I heard him say that years ago. Yeah. I'm tired of you. You act just like they do. Devil got went out of me. <laughs> Whatever an octopus devil is, <laughs> it must have been something horrible looking. He, he got saved, I guess, when he was a kid, but then uh, he uh, used to make liquor, shoot and cut, and all that stuff, and drink and sell it, and all that stuff. But then he got to where he didn't do that.
me and make having me to be where I am today. And you know we can't get enough church. We can't get enough of the Lord. Amen. And I get up every Sunday morning and I listen to Mull singing. Uh, uh, and I, I've done that for years and years. That brought me back home. For years I'd get up and come to see them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, all night. Call me uh, Spencer. He called me. Yeah, I saw him eight, nine years. Yeah. Yeah, we've all smoked, but we, we've yeah, got I'm another one that's standing empty if you go with us. But I do thank the Lord for everything. And you got to thank the Lord and let the Lord know that you appreciate it. Amen. So just keep praying for us and everything will be fine. And we're glad to have you. You've done a great job. Thank you. Amen. My son's on his way. He got pulled over, so he'll be here in a minute. Would be speedy. Probably. <laughs> Sister Graham, why don't you testify? <laughs> I'd just like to say I love the Lord tonight. I've enjoyed being here. Thank you for everything he's done for me. Amen. Um, about three and a half years ago, he brought me through four bypass open heart surgeries and since then he's brought me through three other surgeries Good. and uh, he puts his hand upon me and makes me stronger every day and I just thank him for it. one more thing. I'm going to have to learn to thank God for it. Back in 2013, I was diagnosed with a trace of leukemia. Now, don't you listen. Three years I went to this blood doctor, and it was there. Okay, I put it into God's hands. I said, don't, don't talk about it. Nobody, you, you know, if somebody talked about it, I wouldn't say nothing about it, because I put it in God's hands. Right. Okay, then I, I come down with another result, 
after I had a kid in the sea. But you know, I went to my doctor back about three months, three, four months ago, or maybe a little bit back. The leukemia's gone, the kidney disease is gone. Yes. And I'm healed. Uh, 
Somebody needs to hear it. Amen. There is always somebody out there that needs to hear it. Amen. Now, as for myself, I can honestly tell you I'm not supposed to be here today. The devil has tried to take me out every which way he can possibly take me out. And I have had strokes. I have had, I've been in a wheelchair three times. I was told I was not going to be getting out of a wheelchair. Um, this is what man is telling you, okay? I've always, always, always believed in God. I have been a prayer warrior. I have walked the carpets. I have walked the carpet slack off. My kids will say, Mama, will you just stop? <laughs> no, not until God tells me to stop. I'm not going to stop. Okay? I will not stop. I will not shut up. For that young lady right there, I walked the carpets. And I thank God. She means, she means so much to me. And, and her mama... And they've all just kind of been my family. I've lost, I lost my mama for now. We will meet again because I know that's where she's at, and I'm heading straight for it. And you know, I, I'm just happy to be here. Your singing brought back a lot of memories. You know, of the, the way I grew up. And then I was transplanted at, from a Yankee. <laughs> sit down here and was filled with the Holy Ghost and was given the gift of tongues and was given the gift obviously to speak, teach, preach. I was given all these gifts and when you come up under a religion or a denomination that's division. I had to find my relationship with God. Right. And that's what it's all about. It doesn't matter. I don't judge the Catholics. I don't judge the Lutheran. I don't judge the, any of them. But you have to have a personal relationship with God. Right. And that is what matters. And I had open heart surgery not too long after Sister Ann had hers. I, of course, it was difficult. Mine was difficult because they could not find a good vein in my body and had to use something from out here in my shoulders up by my lungs. And, you know, I was such and such survival rate. I was in ICU for a long time. They didn't think, you know, I was going to make it and this and that and the other thing. Well, I was laying there and I could hear things being said, even though every time I tried to wake up, it would be, boom, that knock me back out again. And I can remember praying in my head. And <coughs> Sister Ann, she's my angel, because God sent her voice to me and brought me back. And that connection is just amazing, because God knew he knew what would touch me. And he knew what would bring me back and make me start fighting because the pneumonia had set in. And they were having problems with the artery clotting. And on and on and on the story goes. But then I have my back issues, you know. And it, it's just one battle after another. But what we need to all understand is this is just a journey. This this is a short period of time. Right. My sons are not mine. They're God's. Yeah. He loaned them to me yeah. to try to get them through their journey in life on the face of this earth. Right. And our ultimate goal is to be in heaven. And you know, I've done that to the best of my ability. They're both grown. They're my both my boys are grown. They're both saved. My daughter, I got her when she was seven, adopted her when she was nine, and um, she came out of some real horrible situations that I'm not gonna talk about. And uh, she has dedicated her life to the Lord too. So I, I am truly blessed. 
And I say all this just basically to let you guys know that no matter what man tells you, he's not in charge. He's not in charge. I don't care if he's a doctor and he's got 15 letters behind his name. I don't care. He's no better than you are. You know, God is no respecter of person. So, you know, if God's going to make him, God's going to make the, you, you know, you just equally. We're all, we are all equal and the same as the body of Christ. And one day, one glorious day, all this will be over and we will be in heaven with our Lord. And I just thank God for everything that he has done for me, everything that he has done for my family. As you can tell, my husband is not the one that's uh, real articulate. He has to kind of be quiet because I have a whole lot to say when I get to open my mouth. And I, you know, I would say I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry, not one bit, because I glorify my God every time I can open my mouth, unless I'm fussing at him. And you forgot then, your younger and I son. <laughs> Pardon me? You forgot your younger son. Oh, yes, yeah. my youngest son. Christian Wesley. He's outside. I, I think I just saw him in the garden there. My, my uh, youngest son, we adopted him. He's... 12. We got him at birth. Blue. Came out blue. Uh, lack of oxygen. We don't know for how long. Um, was stuck in the Bergen Canal that we know of for two hours. He was, the mother gave birth at a Bergen Center. So there was not a monitor there. I was begging and pleading for them to take her by ambulance to a hospital and have C-section. They would not do that because she did not say it. So we were there with her, and he was, he was, yes, he was blue, he was gray, he was dead. They pronounced him deceased when he finally came out. Well, I went to my husband, and we joined hands, and we, we prayed. I was in there with her the entire time. My husband came in once they deemed that he was blue, and there was no life in him. And uh, we prayed and heard a cry, and that was one of the most precious cries I have ever heard in my life. And I, we, I just said, thank you, God, thank you, God. And we ran in there, and my husband, he, he was, he cut the cord. And um, our son Christian was 12, and man says he's autistic and says he has terrible palsy. And um, he did have braces, he did have some difficulties. He does go to physical therapy, but he will preach, preach, preach to you about God and what God has done for him in his, in his life. He um, is not supposed to be able to think midline in his brain, multitask, anything like that. He can do that. Um, he was in public school. Uh, we did take him out because of the, well, I'm just going to say, the sexual education class, he got up and started preaching. I got a call from the school. You know, and then there are just, uh, just all the different things. They have to, you come from an A. Well, wait a minute, maybe you come from this. No, God breathed air into Adam, and then buff, 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 he went. And he knows, he understands. And now he's speaking what he's, you know, understanding what filters in a lot of times, folks, comes out. So whatever you let in is going to come out. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> be careful with that. But he is a blessing. He's a miracle. The last time he was tested, he was at his grade level. Um, he... Now they say autistic children are not real social, psychologically wise, if you look it up in, in, on, on that realm, okay, the, the physical realm, not the spiritual, physical, they say that they're not. Um, and he is just a social butterfly. But 
that when he was two, he would crawl up underneath the tables and do his eyes like this and his ears like that. And he, he, he thought if he just, he couldn't see you, that, that you couldn't see him. So he had to learn the process a little bit differently. But he is indeed another miracle that God has blessed to us. So I just thank God for just being God. I mean, and being in charge of everything. No matter what man tells you, don't jump into it. You know, don't. Don't jump into it. Pray about it. See where God leads you. I do believe God put people on the face of the earth as doctors, as qualified physicians, and things of that nature. I ran into many Christian ones, and I believe that, that they are there for a reason, but I, I believe that God has the ultimate say. And that is what people nowadays need to understand, even when it gets to the younger generation. And I always sit here and I say, Candy, myself, her mother are three different generations. And boys, with, with, with age comes wisdom. You'll get that. Trust me. You think you, you can. You, you'll get it. You know? And right here, we've got three generations right here. Sitting right here. And it's just sprinkled from day one to my mother to and my father. And grandparents and all them that, that are in there. Thank you all. Just praying. I was praying to be my mama, with my mama. And all along, in between all this, God just works in mysterious ways. In between all this, Candace, her daughter, of three generations of prayer warriors right there. And God is just touching and touching and touching and touching and touching. And a lot of the stuff that he is touching in, in this small in this small congregation, just these, these people here tonight would just totally, there's no other way to put it in. God did it. He did it. There's just no way. He did it. 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 That, that's all we can say. Is, is I can just stand here, testify. I can preach. I'm not going to. And I have no respect for the, the pastor that's coming to preach. But I just want you to know that I enjoy being here tonight. Thank you all. And um, it touched me. It brought back a lot of memories, a lot of the old time records I'd hear played <coughs> in my house when I was just a little bitty bitty toddler. And um, I just wanted to let you know just a little bit, just a little bit of what God has done for me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Brother's got a guitar there, amen. You go say more for us. I got to think about a song when she was talking. to
Toxemia when she was carrying him. And, uh, and they had to take him, you know, because her health was at risk, his health was at risk. And, but she ended up on life support for about a week there. And, you know, I really went through a major, major battle right then. Amen. And, uh, uh, but I found out something. I had just started preaching not too long, maybe a year or two before that. I've been preaching to everybody, you know, God performed miracles. And, how God could do anything. Nothing's impossible for the Lord to do. And it came my time, you know, I had to walk it, amen, sir. Amen. Let me tell you something. What you preach, what you sing, what, what you tell others, there's going to be a day you're going to have to walk it yourself, amen. 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 And, and I, I felt myself in that little ICU waiting room. I, I, I'd be by myself in there seeking the face of the Lord. But you know what? I weren't by myself because his presence was just... Uh, Fill that little old room and it'd be just me and him, you know. And uh, he would speak to me, and uh, you know, and I just thank him for that, amen. Yeah, but amen. to make a long story short, you know, she ended up taking herself off the ventilator, amen. Uh, but anyhow, it's a long story on that. But but the enemy attacked my son, then. seven days old, eight days old in the hospital. All of a sudden, his heart rate went crazy. It went 300 beats per minute. And we asked that lady, see, I didn't know much then, but I said, is that real? Like she said, I worked here 20 something years, and I've never seen a baby's heart rate reach that high. I said, that's high as our meter will go. And so it may even have been higher than that. But you know what? God's faithful. Yeah, 15 years later, and then I got my boy. And God's faithful. I got my little girl. That's another story there. The devil tried to take her too. But God's faithful. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. God's faithful. Yeah. Him is faithful. Yeah. Yeah. Woo, I feel that good. Yeah. 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 He said he'd never leave us and he'd never forsake us. And let me tell you something. I know for a fact that he'll never leave you. I know for a fact that he'll never forsake you. If there's any forsaken none, it's us walking off and leaving him. Right. Right. It's us turning our back on him, but he'll never turn his back on us. Right. Right. So what the hell will you? Whatever you may be going through today, you just keep your faith. You keep your eyes on Jesus. And know, and know that joy cometh in the morning. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Brother Jim, Jim. Ha, 
shock to me. So I have to go around this thing. I couldn't figure out where to get off there. The GPS kept telling me to get off here, to get off here. I would run this thing if, if, if I'm lying. And God struck me dead. Eight times. I started at six o'clock going around, around and around and around. What time did I show up at your place, Chuck? Like 25 to 8. <laughs> so a little, a little while later. But, uh, you know, it's in the praise and worship that, that uh, God seems as a normal man. We got uh, about, a, well, I guess I'm going to say about an hour out. And we get to, we get to pray and seek God. And me and Brian begin to feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost in the, in the truck. Mm -hmm. Brothers, do y'all care to sing one song real quick? I mean, I'm really sorry, and I'm sure you're tired. Uh, you don't care? Okay. Um, whatever, whatever you got on, whatever you feel like to do. I'm going to put you on the spot like that. I'm going to feel like you all that. Yeah. <laughs> How many are ready and, and excited to see y'all do something? Yeah. Yeah. If you would, uh, if you're able, stand to your feet. Let's get ready to worship y'all.
I went over and I got one. He said they ranged from one dollar, I think, to five hundred dollars, something like this. Now I was praying all the way over there, God, please don't let it be five hundred. Please don't let it be five hundred. I reached in. He turned, and this is it. this minister. If I named his name, you all would know his name. It's a dear friend of mine. He turned to me. He said, "Are you sure?" I said, "Yeah, I'm sure. I'm grabbing it, aren't I?" So I stuck it down my pocket, and I kind of went back away from everybody, and I began to look. I opened that envelope up, and I wished I hadn't took it. I got the five hundred dollar one. But you know, God came through. I acted out of faith. And God came through and I paid that amount just like the Spirit of the Lord had told me to do. And ever since then, God has just been pouring out uh, a blessing financially. I, I don't want to harp on money because we got enough people on TV doing things like that and, and turning people on. It's not about the money. It's not about the silver or the gold. It's about the shed blood on Calvary's cross. Amen. Amen. And that's where I'm going to go with this tonight. I'm just trying to show you that if we act out of faith, God will meet us where he told us to go. If, like, like Jonah, he told him to go to, to Nineveh, and he refused. There, there, Jonah was on that uh, boat, and all this turmoil began to happen. And maybe that's why we got pulled over, because I was supposed to have been here sooner. I don't know. I might have been your gentleman. Here they tossed Jonah overboard. He got swallowed up by, the, by a big fish, the Bible says. Right. Right. That fish, when he finally began to, to, to submit to God, had spit him out in Nineveh. Uh -huh. Now, I, I've never been on a ship before myself. I don't know that I can afford a ticket. But if I can find me one of those big fish just to take me right in to go, I'd be all right. <laughs> the Bible said that when the, if I remember correctly, when it, the fish spit him out, he was glowing. I might have just made that up. I don't know. <laughs> Y'all are looking at me like you're believing in everything I'm saying. <laughs> but here, Nineveh was in the will of God at this point. Job was in the will of God in Nineveh at this point. Uh, doing what God had called him to do. Uh, he was preaching to God's people. He was telling them, you know, I know Job uh, was in the Old Testament, but I believe if he was here in the New Testament, he'd be, he would have been saying, friends, repent, for Jesus had died on Calvary's cross. It's the shed blood. Come on, somebody. If they don't make you shout that you once win it, they don't let you fire, then you've got a problem. I tell you, it's the shed blood on Calvary's cross. Somebody stand to your feet and give Jesus Christ the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings and Him like the I don't want to carry on too long. I know y'all have been here too late already. Sister, would you come here real quick? The one on this side. Yeah. Uh, Brother Ruth, I'll take it. One of you all to help me pray. You don't have to, I'm just. But I'm going to respond, I didn't have a choice. Uh, Brother Ruth, Sister Ruth. Everybody in the church will not be here tonight. See, Brother Rue has uh, two churches, isn't it? So I'm confused. Are we in Riceville? Sweetwater. I'm not as crazy as I say in the same Either way, while I was speaking and I was looking, it was like you began to, to move away. You're not from Sweetwater. Not from, from Riceville either. Maybe maybe uh, some of that area, like like Athens, like area. Um, there's an apartment building that you live in. So I'm sitting outside the door now. I I, I can see it. So if you believe me, you believe God. Shout yes. Yes. God is going to do something here tonight. Amen. There's a one and a six over the door. Am I wrong? God said he's going to mend your broken hearts. You've been grieving. I've felt that pain myself. 
You've been grieving the loss. Was it a father? My mother just lost her parents both in the same week. We had the memorial service here one. We traveled two and a half hours to come down here and have the mom come up here with me. Alan. Yeah? No? If I'm lying to you, you tell, turn around and tell these people because if I'm sitting in this holy place and telling a lie. Ricky Allen. She said Ricky Allen. I, this, this isn't John Edwards. Just hold on a second. <laughs> Mom, come on over here. Over here. Uh, no, 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 no. No, right here, right here. Right. I'll, I'll walk you around the whole church in a second. But, with, uh, Elaine, did, this, did you say it was? Yeah. What did you say your name was? With her. She just lost her daddy and you just lost her. She lost her mama and her daddy in the same way. I wish you all would stretch your hands this way toward me and believe God. I'm telling you, I felt the presence of the Holy Ghost on the way here. God is getting ready to do something. Lord, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, God. Lord, I ask that you pour out your Holy Ghost and glory upon my sister, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, right now, God. From the top of her head, Lord, to the soles of her feet, Lord. You still have that song I, I was telling you about. Is there any way that you can put it on me? <coughs> Continue to worship God. Can I get everybody this? Out here begin to worship God. Put your, get your minds upon God, you know. We get our minds upon God and we get to worship Him. The possibilities are limitless. Right. The Bible says all things are possible to them that believe. That's right. yeah. We can believe and believe and believe, but we need the presence of the Holy Ghost to be here. I'm telling you, when me and Brian began to pray in the, in the truck on the way here, the, the power of God was pretty strong. I almost wrecked this on account of it. And again, to, 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 to anybody that's not used to being in church too long or too late or what have you, I, I really hope that you all aren't offended. You know, I, I feel like in, in, in church today, and I'm not speaking of any denomination, but we've gotten into a form. And the Bible tells us that in the last days, men shall have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. You know, we've come into this form where, where if God can't bless us, in the 20 to 30 minutes that we all, uh, allow him, the tough luck, God, because we're going on. But you know, I remember reading about the Azusa Street Revival where people be, came together of all nationalities and, 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 and creeds and everything else and began to seek God until the Chicago glory came down and the physical things began to happen. You know that revival went on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There was no beginning and no end to this thing. They didn't say, okay, we're opening the service now. We're ending the service now. The presence of God would come in because they continuously worshiped God. I wish somebody would get their mind upon God and not lift up your hands and say, these are Holy Ghost hands and I'm going to praise them for God. I want to. Don't be afraid to go to Holy Ghost hands. Amen. If you're afraid to praise God now, what are you going to do when you get to heaven? You know, so many people are talking about, I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. And I don't mean to come, out, come across as mean or hateful or anything like that. If that's the way I am, I apologize. I'm sorry. I mean this with love, but when we get to heaven, we're all going to be praising God. Yeah, I know I am because I'm going to be excited and surprised that I'm there myself. Yeah, come on. If you can't do it here with the rest of us, go right. well, warm it up, get ready, get a little loose, go and get on the other side of those pearly gates. Right. Heaven might be hell for you. And I, I, what I mean is if you can't praise Him now, I don't care 
word of matter. If I'm in Walmart and I'll put the presence of God or feel like praising God, I'll lift up my hands and shout hallelujah. I don't care who thinks I'm crazy or insane. I don't care what society thinks about me. Right now, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Sister, right here on the back row, in the grave. I saw it. I'm going to pass through Master Bill. 5 3 6 0. It's, 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 it's the house number, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. I, I, I. 5 3 6 0. That's not yours, is it? No? Madison Bill, Madison Bill. 
I'm over here. How far is Pastor Bell from here? Plenty of time to pray and get up to God. Because he said he heard the prayer that you had uttered on the way here. Lift up your hands. If you two would begin to lay hands on her real quick. September 8th. Sister Sherry, you're going to see a turnaround before September. It's in several areas of your life. It's, uh, you know, when I said I'm trying to be led by the Spirit, I'm trying to flow in it or whatever. Excuse my English, it's horrible. But I, I hope the finances because, not, not because we're in a depressed community and so many are needing financial miracles. That's easy to say. That's easy to do. But God is getting ready to bless you financially. God has heard your cry, he said. And he's about to honor your faithfulness. This gentleman over here with you, who is this? Your husband? Brother, would you come here real quick? Would you take her hand? Brother Ruth, these are your parishioners, congregants, audience. Would you come up here? Lay hands on them. I think I used every terminology people in the audience. God, I thank you for your presence here tonight. Lord, I thank you. God poured out upon them right now. The turning around is beginning to happen right now. You'll see the fullness of it by se September. Did you ever go to the doctor? You remember the last time I was here? God had shown me there were some things with your stomach, some knots. You haven't been to the doctor? Hernias? It's a nice miracle, man. Hernias. You might as well call them devils. They've got to go. I'm no doctor, but I know that in James, he was the great physician, and I happen to know the great physician as well as I know that you do. And tonight you get your surgery, and we, you're going to leave out of here without those things. You're not taking those with you. Come on, brother. Come on up here, Sister Ruth. God poured out for my sister right now. It is. 
I command it to go right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Come here, man of God. Man of God. Where's the, the oil? That's not your favorite dress, is it? That's not your favorite dress, is it? Lord, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I, right now, God. God, pour that up on her. Fire! Brother Hale, come up here. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you. Brother, Brother Hale, uh, 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 Brother Rude, Brother Hale is a minister. If you would, brother, play that one, one more time. One more time. Well, the presence of God is still in this house. Lord, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, in the name of Jesus. You see, we've been talking to each other for about, what, 34 years now? This is the first time we've met each other. Facebook is a wonderful thing. I guess it could be a dangerous thing as well. We've linked our ministry's up via Facebook. Brother Hale was brought up. I'm a denomination that didn't believe like you or I or full gospel. Didn't believe that way. About a year and a half ago, me and Brother Hale were talking. We were praying together over the phone. You're still feeling it, aren't you? When God poured out the Holy Ghost anointing upon him, and he began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave the others, just like he did in the second chapter of the book of Acts. For those of you who are unaware of what it said, it said that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting, and the people of them clothed in tongues like as a fire. And it said upon each of they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave the others. I feel like I'm out of that. Repeating myself a couple of times. How many times did I quote to you on the way here? I know some people get offended if you let men lay hands on women. That's not why I was doing what I was doing. Or vice versa. But while the anointing is still fresh on the two of you, I want you to come here. Sister, would you come here and help us pray? Tonight, I want, I want God to rekindle what he started in Brother Hill. You were at work when that happened, weren't you? I locked myself in my bedroom and I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Because I felt like every time I'd come to the altar and seek God and seek God, I'd have a person over here, a person over here, a person over here, tell me, hold on, turn loose, let go. Believe God. I didn't know. I was open. So I got along with God up in my bedroom one day and I locked the door and I said, God, if this thing is truly of you, and I can still have what they have in the book of Acts, and the Holy Ghost power fell upon me, I was 14 years old, you remember? A few weeks later, and I don't tell this story hardly ever. You know this for a fact. I'd already known that God had called me into the ministry. But he opened the door after I got the Holy Ghost. You remember? In the second chapter of Acts, I'm getting some of this. For the hell, just wait a second. You remember that old song? They were in the upper room that day, all praying in his name. Baptized with the Holy Ghost when power for service came. It's that Holy Ghost anointing is what it takes to have the service. You remember what happened with the room after the Holy Ghost fell and they all began to speak with other tongues? They, they didn't just act crazy and dance and shout and act wild. 3,000 souls came to God. You want to know why we're not seeing people one over for God? For one, we lost our love. You remember Paul said that if you do all these things, you can prophesy, you can speak in all the tongues you want to speak in, but if you do these things and have not love, nothing more than a sounding brass and a tingling symbol. And I know, just like any other man that's made of flesh, have been guilty of lack of love or that's why I had to apologize and repent a moment ago. But 3,000 souls came to God. The last time I was here, there was, if I remember correctly, no, not here in, in, in the other location. 
was it six, seven people who came to the altar? There was two of the boys who rode with me. One was supposed to have been here tonight, but had to work over. On the way home, the two that came with me, or the one, one of the two that came with me, ended up giving his life to God. We ran into somebody at the store. They got saved and got a miracle. God is God, and God is in control. He's doing something here tonight. I apologize to you because I know a few days ago I told you about Hoover and Hollow. This is the loudest you've probably ever seen me yet. Lift up your hands if you want. If you have to, brother, just for a few minutes, let's start that song over one more time. Just let it play through. He's a mount taller than you two. So if you just lay hands on him. Lord, that same Holy Ghost power that fell on the Zuzer Street, that fell on the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts in the second chapter. God, stir it up in his life, in his heart, in his mind, God. God, I, I ask that you turn his finances around, Lord. God, I thank you for the miracle that's taking place in, his, in, the, in the life of his wife, God, yeah. in her mind. Yeah. You see, this brother not only needs a, a greater anointing, continue, continue to seek God. Continue to praise him, Brother Him. But he needs a miracle. You see, people like this, my heart goes out to. God, pour out that fire upon him, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, Lord, I praise you. God poured out from the top of his head, Lord, to the soles of his feet. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, hallelujah. How many times have you heard the phrase, Brother Rivers, bubbling up? Here it comes. He's got it. It's about there. It's about there.
Allah onda bir bile. Kızlar. Fourteen years ago. How are you now, lady? Well, you remember how I used to Terry? Now I'm not old, and I remember Terry. They wouldn't let this brother go. And if I got things from myself, my, my God, we're gonna get the Holy Ghost from that. Now, now I know some of you've been turning off a million times by watching television preachers and they say, well, that's somebody watching me. A million miles away than I've ever been before, and they're doing this and that. But I'll tell you, are we still on YouTube? No. Facebook Live. There's somebody watching now that's been praying for a woman. What's the count? Been praying for a woman. Was suffering from migraine headaches, and the doctors haven't been able to do anything. But right now, God said He's heard your prayers, and He's healing this one. She's got red hair. Red hair. I can see her. You see her too. She's what? Like a denim dress. Right? That's easy to say in Pentecost. Lots of women wear denim dress. Sister Ruth's got one on. But God's doing it right now. Well, right now. coincidence, you're not here by chance, 
You're not here because I'm her son and she was coming to be with me. You're here on a divine appointment. Same for you, my little brother. God's been dealing with you the same, but you're the last to admit it. Now, God has something special for the both of you. You believe that? What's your daddy doing? A carpenter? I thought he said a carpenter. I thought maybe Jesus was his daddy. He might have been Jesus' brother. He might have been Joseph. You say he was a, a golf course. That's not time. Uh, we'll, we'll be all right with that. With every young stay that I will close the service out like this, it's all right. I know some ladies on the Orthodox for people to be standing around the podium, but might as well. Might as well. With every eye closed and every head bowed. Friends of more, I begin to read. Just follow with me for a second. The Bible about uh, the crucifixion and the importance of the crucifixion. I begin to pray and seek God that he would show me the best possible way uh, to make sense of this thing. You know, way about that movie, what was it, uh, the, 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 the Passion of Christ? It's pretty good rendering, but I don't feel like it done any justice to the real thing. Bear with me for just one moment with, with every head bowed and every eye closed. Friends, we use that movie as a, as a point of contact, as what have you. Everybody pretty much has seen that movie. But think of the way they whipped and beat Jesus. The way they mocked and humiliated him, flogged him with their sticks. All this, so he wouldn't have to live. He died for us, so he wouldn't have to live with us. You know, you begin to read, read the Bible, and everything we need, have need of, was paid for at Calvary's cross. If you're here tonight and you don't know, Jesus is your Lord and Savior. If you've not accepted what he's done for you at Calvary's cross. I want you to lift up your hand and say, Brother Emerson, will you pray with me? I want to say a little prayer with you. Friends, we're not promised Tomorrow, we're not promised any length of time when we leave out of here. I had a cousin that died just before. My grandparents on my father's side, it's the same age I am now, was filled with the Holy Ghost at one time, serving God, was the leader of his youth group. He'd gotten away from God, started doing drugs, Ended up in the hospital for something routine. This cousin of mine, we were really close, and I tried daily. We'd talk nonstop to witness to him, to bring him back in. Because what he had, I felt like, was far too great to go to waste. Something had told me in my spirit when he went to the hospital, this was it. He's gone. I tried to tell my wife, and she said, why, he's just going for something simple. That's a routine surgery. He'll be in and out in no time. Wouldn't you know it? I never spoke to him again. But praise God, the last things that I said to him was, you know, the way you were brought up to serve God. I said, please, please. He said, I'm going to be fine. I said, please, 
Pray with me before you go and have your surgery. We knelt and prayed. He sought God. I can't tell you the sincerity of anybody's heart, but I, based off the prayer he prayed, I, I can tell you he went to heaven. Friends, I give you that same invitation here tonight. You're not promised it doesn't matter 18 to 100. The cemetery is full of people of all ages. You want to pray tonight? Just lift up your hand and I pray with you. I won't tarry too long with this. I don't know. Hope you're here till midnight. Brothers, you're already here. Tristan, Jaquels. Oh, here's one raise his hand. Here, just pray. I don't mean to put you on the spot. I'm sorry I, that I did. Now, salvation is something that we all believe in, regardless of whatever. Am I wrong? Can I get a few people to come help me pray with them, and then we'll try to wrap this up and get out of here? Now you boys can have your seat. Um, I fear his life and was already here. Um, I'll talk to you in a little bit. Brother uh, Brown? These people haven't already been here for a while. How so we didn't get that? But could you do me a big favor? Could you run out to the truck and get the, that, that, that bag for me real quick? You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Gotcha. <laughs> Y'all aren't standing in the area at all tonight? You're, you're going from here all over to yeah, there? Yeah, we're going with Kingston. From, from, from yeah, here he, tonight? He's going to make us over with the keys to the church. Oh, okay. Well, that ain't too bad. <laughs> I really feel bad for keeping you on so late then. I mean, if I'd have thought, if I'd have thought, but I'll never do. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been anywhere in my life on time, but I don't think I've ever been that late either. You remember that time we were, <laughs> we were going to that church and uh, I was telling, uh, yeah, that's not a story for church. This is why I despise GPS. I hate GPS. That's like, I don't know what type of system they're using, but if it's going to take you, it's, it's supposed to be doing your direction, it's going to take you in the same area, in a circle, eight times. Well, that's not any good. That, or they know that I'm not that right. I don't know. Uh, we got a mail on this. I don't know if you do for anything. If you'd like to be on it, just lift up your hand real quick. I've got pens and paper and kindergarten, you know. Uh, just lift up, lift up your hand and we'll keep in touch with you, let you know what's going on. Uh, how many we've seen saved in the month? Uh, how many miracles we've seen? How many lives we've seen change? How many felt the presence of God here in that? How many are excited to read about the presence of God moving in the other areas? Except for Rifle or Athens. Or where we at? Sweetwater's. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I'll probably have to do it again. <laughs> but if you want one, um, I got these little cards. I'm going to take up an offering. Um, if you want to just fill it out, if you need a pen, I'll give you a pen to fill it out with. It's got uh, name, number, you know, normal stuff to be put on the um, mailing list. Email address, address. Now, let me say this. We're still on. We've, we've spoken about this before. And I want this to be known. Nobody I spoke to here tonight. You're not on any mailing list of mine, are you? You've never received any piece of mail of mine? You might be. She's kind of, can't doesn't have a, you know, daughter right, she can't say no. You're not, you're not on any mailing list. You're not. Sister Ruth is. I, I talk to her all the time. Baby. No. She's not either. I just wanted to point that out for the viewing audience. I told you about the lies I've had told on me. Nobody filled out any card. I, I, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, whatever else is out there. I got here about two hours late. I didn't speak to anybody. And I've got all my cards right here. Jaquins, if you'd help me pass these out. If you want. Well, that's that's something else I want to say. I feel like the length of time that we've known each other, we've been pretty good friends. But we've never really divulged any great information, have we? Now, in that same bag, there's some envelopes. I told you about the envelopes. Uh, if you feel led to take one, just let me know and I'll let you have one. I wouldn't turn you down. If anybody needs a pen, just let me know. I've got some. Seven now. Wait a second. Good friends. Wait a second. Oh, uh, if you have to give, great. For those that are having the, the financial trouble, like I was talking about, it's all right, Bob. I don't want to sound like a con artist or a tele a televangelist, but I want you to reach down and grab the largest book you have out of faith. You see, God honors faith. There's somebody now that, that, that said, well, I've got faith, but I'm not going to put any, the, the last or the biggest amount I've got. That's not faith. Do what? You're fired, man. Wait a second. You're about to get fired again. Come on. Come on right here with you. Brother Ruth, would you pray over the offering real quick? Heavenly Father, first of all, we thank you and we praise you for your precious presence as we fell here tonight. Lord, we thank you for all the song of Zion, Lord, and the moving of your spirit and everything that you've done. We give you the glory for that, Lord. Lord, we ask that you bless this offering tonight, Lord, and bless the giver, Lord, and Bless those that weren't able to give tonight, Lord. And Lord, just move, Lord, for them in every area, oh God, that they need you to move in, Lord, and touch their lives, Lord. But whether they need healing in their bodies, Lord, I ask that you heal them, Lord, and break through somewhere, Lord. Just move for them, Lord, and touch them, Lord. And Lord, we thank you. And we give you all the honor. We give you all the glory and the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Like I say, I'm not going to hold you any longer. <laughs> You've been here long enough. You've suffered long enough. <laughs> did you Did you want to dismiss? Or did you have anything you wanted to say? That I do. I want to say something. I didn't even turn this thing off, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need it. I don't need it. The, the presence of God has truly been in this house tonight. And, and yes. I just want to share a testimony. I was listening to you guys as we came in. As my son said, my mom and dad died. Uh, last they've been gone a month. 
the third and the sixth of last month, they both died. And my mother was a very difficult woman. If you knew her, she was not saved until she died. And we went over last night, my husband and I going through some things at the house, and my mom was into the tarot cards and, and Ouija board and, and all that stuff. And um, my son seen before they passed that both of them were going to die around the same time. And we were praying, and we were praying, and we were praying. And my son led her to the Lord. I say all that to say this. Just before she had died, the day before she had passed, I was in the room with her. And she had a trachea in her throat and she couldn't speak. And she mouthed, pray. So I began to pray and the Holy Spirit fell in that room so heavy. And I told her, I said, Mom, he's here. He's here. I know when she left this world, she's with the Lord. All that stuff is, it was in, under the blood. And my daddy is with the Lord too, so I know they are both with the Lord. And I said that because... We are all the only words that a lot of people see. You have to live what you believe. My mama knew that I believed in what and I walked and I believed what I believed. We butted heads a lot of times because she believed the way she believed and I believed the word. And she'd tell my aunt, Betty's a Christian. Betty's a Christian. Yes, I'm a Christian. But I stood in the gap all the time for my mother and so did my son. And my children, <laughs> they know how she was, but she not. But I just wanted to tell if you have anyone in your life, does not say if you to you stand in the gap for them. Yeah. God Amen. will draw them in.